Hello and welcome to the Dirty Straw Hats. Today we'll be talking about One Piece chapter 992. Um, I'm Mo and I have my, my friend Bush over here. What's up, Bush? Hello, I am Bushido Spirit, the greatest One yeah. Piece reviewer of all time has returned. <laughs> <laughs> that, that hasn't been retired, dog. That hasn't been retired. Um, so I'm the best, man. This is true. This is true. But yeah, like let's let's start this off the top. Um, yeah, what do you what do you think of the color page this week, Bush? The color page. Uh, I'm not really big on color pages. Uh, hey, uh, I don't really overanalyze what's on the color page. Uh, I do that every week, man. Every time only- I see a color page, <laughs> I break that down and I compare it to every color page Oda's ever done, dog. I'm being honest. With I mean, you. I guess, but I mean, I this this color page isn't that that special I, I feel like there's better color pages um yeah, oh, of course yeah this one's I not mean, that good <laughs> in my opinion no. i would agree as far as like the line art goes because like for me i'm like this is like pretty standard for Oda as far as line art goes yeah. at this point but i was like the coloring is really good like this looks like the type of coloring he probably would have gone for like after he came back from the time skip and he felt like he had to prove something i i mean i wouldn't even say that because i felt like this there's like it's just Everything is colored the way it's supposed to be nah, colored. I don't man. feel like there's like a tone or anything like that. It's just like he just colored Flat. it. If you go back to some of his like post time skip, like really early post time skip color pages, like he was going for like all these different like values and like he would try and get like random greens and pinks in places and it just looks so good. Yeah. Um, I, I think like more recently they've all been really flat, you know, like I'm sure you could see like a couple outliers, of course. But for the most part, they've been really, really flat, and he just kind of does them to do them. But I think because this is coming like back from like a two-week break, um, he probably wanted to go a little bit harder, you know. And also, we got a, a cover, you know. We got like the front page of Shonen Jump this week. Yeah, yeah. We got to. We also got to see Yamato's colors for the first time, you know. We've had every person on Deviant Art try and color, you know, every One Piece character's hair and get it wrong, and we finally know, you know. It's like, uh, go ahead. Some of those DVNRs are pretty good, man. They look better than what he decided to go with sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, so. he, like, I feel like this dude, like, picks up, like, he gets, like, a color chart and he just throws a dye and just gets, like, a random <laughs> color. Of dye. I mean, if you look at, like, Black Mariah, like, what part of, like, the name Black Mariah makes you think, like, she's about to be blonde? Like, none of that. That's not what I think about when I think Black Mariah. I mean, Mariah. but you know, it's, it's older, man. It's off the wall. So maybe, uh,. Is, there's more to her name than her color scheme. Like, I mean, I mean white beard don't have a beard, man. Like, <laughs> you're right, you're right. So. This is true. I'm, I, and didn't black beard not have a beard until like the time skip, like a real yeah. fucking beard, like <laughs> while you're being called black beard or some shit. But you wonder, yeah. like, what, what, where did the name come from? Makes you it's think. It's true. It's true. It's so. facts. Yeah, y- Yamato. Yamato has like white hair, and like I think she has like green highlights towards the bottom, like green highlights, and um. I think also, how do I describe it? Like red eyes and then like red horns. Um, I don't know how well that matches up to Kaido's like coloring or if it's even attempting to match up with Kaido's coloring. No, I was going to say that that, that's, that's kind of, uh, that, that kind of throws me off because I mean, she's supposed to be related. Well, he is supposed to be related to Kaido. The His, his color scheme doesn't match Kaido's at all. Yeah, like, but then again, it's like it, it, there's there's always the big question mark of like mothers in One Piece and like yeah. I I don't put, I don't put too much stock in that type of stuff. I think it looks cool. I think the design was dope before I knew about the colors, and I don't yeah. think the colors are killing it. If anything, it adds to it. I really like the the red eyes. I think the red eyes are dope. And oh uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean like I just don't put too much stock in that. Like I'm just I'm just glad it makes sense to a degree. Um, yeah. but yeah, like let's get into the actual chapter. The opening page, if I remember correctly, is Big Mon talking to Perospero since the since Whole Cake Island, her departure on Whole Cake Island. And he talks about uh, the fact that Big Mom's chosen to ally herself with Kaido. And he's like, oh, but Big Mom, that conflicts with your plans of becoming um, Pirate King someday. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't obvious already, there's already uh, plans to, to for that plan to just end really quickly, you know. Yeah, I mean, Big, Big Mom's a, a schemer. Um, she's always concocting <laughs> some type of plan, and she builds I'm, I'm these like, alliances. <laughs> and she breaks them. Like yeah, I, I don't. You're even right, know. but you make, you you make it sound like she's like some some like genius mastermind. I don't give her that much credit. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I don't give her that much credit. I think she's like she's been a she's low key kind of an idiot that's been guided up until this point. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't. I think people are underestimating the intelligence level of Big Mom. I think she throws tantrums, but that's 
because she Listen, has like an eating, uh, eating disorder. I don't think it has anything to do with her lack of intelligence at all. Y- you're you're right, but like I don't think she's like ah, man. She's not like she's not like. I don't, I don't like characterize her as the thinker, you know what I mean? Like, and to be fair, I don't really characterize Kaido in that way either. Like, we'll talk about Kaido in a little bit, but Kaido don't look so good right now, dog. Like, oh yeah, like this arc, he, he, he look, he, he's looking terrible right now. If I'm being honest, yeah. but not, not to leave Big Mom too quickly. Um, after that brief interaction with Parasparos, um, Marco ends up talking to Big Mom and she's like, why are you even helping out this Luffy guy? And I mean, th- that's that's like a definable characteristic of just about every villain in, in One Piece. They always question, why do you put so much stake in this Luffy guy? Why yeah. is he so special? Cause he's and it's the like, chosen cause, one. <laughs> cause he's, because he's that guy. You know what I mean? Because he's that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought, I think the most interesting part about that Marco bit, if there is an interesting part to anyone, is that he he refers to the he he's very specific about that word remnants, right? Like the remnants of the white bit pirates, yeah. meaning that those people continue to live, but like they aren't governed by a captain anymore. Like the last time they technically had a captain, I guess, is during the payback war with Blackbeard, where Marco was like the their uh the the captain, I guess, and um yeah. that isn't the case anymore. So anybody that shows up in Wano up until this point is going to do it based on their, the, just their own desire to do so. But to me, that kind of telegraphs that everyone's going to come back because um, it wasn't just their loyalty to Blackbeard that kept them a part of that crew. It was their loyalty to the other members of that crew too. So like, I, I, Odin I'm just, was a member. Yeah. Well, no, Odin, yeah, exactly. he was temporarily yeah, a member. Yeah, yeah. He, he was yeah. more a member of Whitebeard's crew than he was of Rogers. He really yeah. only joined Rogers crew on that final voyage, you know? Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah. So I'm 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 actually just waiting on it. I'm waiting for the po- for the moment where the rest of the white beard crew just pulls up, like Jozu, if Jozu's even still around, Whitey Bay, and just all these other people that that we uh, remember from Marine Ford, because oh, this exactly. war, this war yeah. is supposed to rival it, right? Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah, yeah. um, that that was an interesting conversation, uh, just because, like you know, Big Mom, just I mean, just Peril Sparrow and Marco and Big Mom just having like a casual conversation. One of respect, like she wasn't upset. They weren't really upset at Marco for like going against what they were planning on doing. I mean, cause I mean, at the end of the day, she she broke her promise to attack Kaido and join forces with him. So uh, they were really upset that you know Marco's like uh, you know still I guess still going after Kaido. Like I'm, I'm yeah. with the Straw Hats now. One hundred percent, yeah, yeah so. absolutely. A part of an alliance that directly opposes her and Kaido, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a thing I thought was really interesting because, like, immediately after the Marco thing, we get to like a a panel of like Carrot and like there's some Bla- Black Mariah stuff we'll talk about. But I'm also interested in the idea of um, everybody has a grudge going into this war, and somehow these grudges and like paying back the people that did you wrong is as important as the war itself yeah. like i remember uh last chapter right um we just cut to a shot that like a lot of people got mad at because it was off screen again like a ton of stuff on wano but man we saw inu and like uh and neko did not forget at all about what what jack the drought did on zo he didn't oh, he, yeah. they didn't forget a single second of that and these guys were sure to like thrash him first just like completely off screen right um as soon Damn. as soon as they uh went so long or whatever and the same thing for carrot like as soon as like perisperos arrives on wano and we get that brief interaction at the beginning of the chapter yeah like, carrot's like i guess i gotta pay back like perisperos for what, what happened to pedro and i'm like god damn like no, a, nobody's nobody's yeah. forgetting about it yeah this seemed like a bit like a re- reoccurring theme uh with the you know the revenge and the payback because uh well, uh, Kanjiro, man, that was his whole motivation to like the trick <laughs> the scabbards for all this, this yeah. all this time, man. It's like it's payback, you can tie that so. back to Marco too, right? Because of the payback oh, yeah. war, and then also yep, him coming yep. back, and then all the crew probably eventually coming back towards the end of the arc. And yeah, yeah. but let's let's be honest, man. Carrot Carrot is not doing nothing to Peril Sparrow, man. So <laughs> I mean, that's a little transformation, and like I mean, I wait, don't even know about that. I mean, that means she could go so long. I mean, if if I mean, if, if Neko Mamushu. Uh, I don't know, man. Because we, yeah, because we see that go so long on Whole Cake Island, and she didn't really attack. Uh, she, yeah, she just order. destroyed ships, right? She just yeah, destroyed she, ships. You're right. yeah, fair so. enough. It was, it was, like, it was like strong for Kara, but like when you actually compare it to anybody of like actual strength, it isn't, it isn't too big. I get that. That's a fair point. Fair point. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, like, let, let's uh, let's get to the bulk of it. Um, there's some stuff we could say about Black Mariah and Yamato and Shinobu, uh, possibly being in, going in the direction of Black Mariah, but I hope that doesn't happen because I already have like certain matchups that I want to see. But you know, the thing I want to see and the thing Oda will actually do have, you know, they're not always the same thing. You know, look, I'm cool but, with them him breaking up matchups, like, uh, <laughs> like. I mean, it, with him, it's always unpredictable. You don't know what, how it's going to turn out. Uh, and there, there right. might not even be full-on fights, like act like regular matchups. Like, we saw in something like Indy's Lobby. It's just, yeah, 100%. Well, oh, no stop, chain to Zoro, <laughs> like, for most of that. So, yeah. yeah. There, there, are, there are two Yonko on this island. I don't think there are really going to be any straight-up fights, like, one-to-one with either of these Yonko. I think that'd be ridiculous, yeah. to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, I, th- I think um, I'm looking forward to the potential of, like, obviously, who's who and Ulti maybe fighting Usopp and Nami. And I'll, I'll talk about this in detail another time, but I really, really, really want Robin to get to fight Black Mariah, you know? I don't know if she'll be able to handle that fight, but I really hope that would be a moment for Oda to be like, you know what, the two women that have been, like, neglected up until this point, like, with the time skip and stuff will get a really dope fight, like fight out of this arc, and I really, I really do hope that happens. I, I, I agree with that too. I, I hope that happens because we talked about this the last time we saw Robin get a serious fight was uh, Sky Pia. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's, so that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So like, yeah. and Robin is, has a powerful devil fruit, and we haven't really seen her fully utilize that fruit. Like and yeah. it, even with the casual stuff, we haven't really seen her do much of that. Uh, yeah, I think the most impressive thing she's done with that fruit, time skip wise, is that she can like make a full on just clone of herself, which is like a big leap for her, right? But there's so much potential with that fruit, and and to be honest, the way in which she uses it doesn't really even match her personality. We'll get into that another time. But there's so much, there's so much stuff like not being utilized about her fruit and what she could potentially do, considering how smart she is. Oh yeah, um, definitely. But to the to the final bulk portion of this uh chapter, right? We should talk about the scabbards and them pretty much getting their big highlight moment. And I think really like how you feel about this chapter really comes down to how do you feel about the scabbards? Like, and to be honest, I'm just gonna start with that. How do you feel about the scabbards? Like, how do you feel about them individually as a group? Do you care about them? Do you not care about them? Um, I, I, I'm, 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 I don't, I don't know how I feel about the scabbards because I, I like when we first see Kenny Mon on Punk Hazard or like when we first hear about one or I'm thinking like this guy's he cutting fire, he op. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, I mean, he's still cutting fire. He did that last I mean, chapter. He's still right? cutting fire, but I'm like, oh, okay, so they, they're not as strong as I originally thought they were. At least for Kenny Mon, but I think Ashura Doji is, is cool, uh, and uh. Inu, Inu and uh, Neku, they are they are strong in a suit long form. They just body Jack easily. Just body um, Jack. They off screen Jack. They treated them like a scrub, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Kawamatsu is like a toy. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's true. Kawamatsu <laughs> is like Kawamatsu yeah. is like such fake hype, dog. Like my guy was in the cell. They're like, you don't want to mess with him, and and the dude, and he's just he's just adorable. You know what I mean? He's just like, he looks like a plush, you know? Yeah, I, speaking of adorable, man, Kiku. Just, <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep, keep up. I, I think I, I think Kiku is one of the only scabbards in this in this chapter that didn't get like a little spotlight moment where they use a move. Even Izo got to do a little move or whatever. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. But, um, just, uh, with all this armor on, looking like, I don't know what the... <laughs> I think I think Oda was like, let's let's keep the effeminate energy inside the suit of armor. They had to like they had, they had to pull a, like an Alphonse Elric like moment real quick, just put yeah, him in a suit yeah. of armor before they get into combat. Yeah, oh, this, I mean it's kind of it, it's funny, but to be honest, like uh, it's not good. It's not good that like you're really wishy washy on how you feel about the scabbards because like like I said, this is their highest point in my like if if I'm if I'm to make a like an educated guess. It's all downhill for them from here, dog. Like, there's well, no the, way they win this fight. Like, well, you know? oh, oh, at, at this current moment, I'm like, yeah, they finally doing. You know, they, yeah, they living up to the hype right now. Like, they are, they are bodying Kaido. You know, right. they are hitting him in all his uh, soft spots. You know, making him feel some type <laughs> of way. It's all emotional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But here's the thing with Kaido. I don't know if you feel this way about Kaido. Kaido's like taking damage face is hilarious. Like, and his bounce back is insane. <laughs> he's got like that Usopp bounce back. Well, like Usopp looks like he just died in one panel, but then the next panel he's up and walking. 
You know? Oh what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what, like like look at Kaido in that chapter. Like every time somebody does a move on him, he looked like he just died, bro. But then he just backed the next page like full strength, even stronger. You know? And it's just it's just funny. I, dog. It's I'll be honest, man. Kaido kind of sucks in his dragon form, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he no, bro. is he drunk right now? Because Luffy was oh, bodying yeah, him. Yeah, like... he's drunk. He's drunk. We okay. already know that. Like okay. yeah, they were partying about the whole alliance thing, yeah. and the fact that they're gonna join forces <laughs> and stuff. Like they weren't really expecting this to happen, right? They had like inklings of it because the plan got ruined in the beginning, but then like you know, <laughs> Akini Mom pulled his uh his fucking like six his his six his six head move, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm like, like, you need to stop going like I. It, you gotta explain this. It's like the animal form is supposed to be their strongest. I thought it was like hybrid form supposed to be the strongest form, right? Yeah, but but here's the thing: we don't even know that this dude is a Zoan type user. That's just kind of an assumption, uh, like an. And to be fair, it's a good assumption to make because, like, who can just, av- like, on average just turn into a dragon even in the One Piece world? But, man, like, they Oda seems to be weirdly sort of, like, shrouding this in mystery for no reason. Oh, yeah, yeah, you you're know? right. <laughs> you're yeah, right. Yeah. Like, yeah. This, gotta be a reason why he didn't just introduce it. And uh, one thing I found really interesting is the, the, little, the little backstory they did. I guess you're gonna get into that next. Um, I was gonna say, you can get into it. It's like, I don't have to, I don't have to introduce every single oh, topic. Okay. You can <laughs> So they refused Odin's teachings of his like two sword style, because they wanted to compete with each other, as to, as far as like who's the strongest disciple, mm-hmm. and apparently they they learned his style behind his back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they yeah, used yeah. it on Kaido to end the chapter. I thought that was interesting, yeah. and it, it makes so much sense, you know, because they at one point I think each of them were like rivals to him. I know I know Ashura Doji was, and they got to this big fight. I don't know about the other ones. Uh, Right, right. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it, ma- it makes sense that they would be like, "Yeah, I want to get stronger on my own. I, I don't really want to really want to learn from you." It's like like a rivalry between within the group, I, a rivalry between you know Odin himself as well as with each other. So I thought that was interesting. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'll say one thing that was really important about that. Like, I share your exact feelings about that flashback. I'm really happy that we got like even those two free panels that we got of that just to just to kind of like expound on their characters because it does feel like that the scabbards you know like there's that sort of wishy-washy nature to them in terms of how people feel about them at this stage because it's like this is their big moment if you aren't already full-on in on the scabbards and like caring about them or loving them you're not going to feel for anything that happens like to them and you're also not going to be that invested in what i think is easily going to be that coolest point in this arc right and yeah. um but but yeah one thing i think is really good about that flashback is is that a thing that kind of surprised me and a ton of other people from my understanding was that all of the scabbers could use rio you know the sort of like advanced armament hockey like um that luffy had to learn from hyogoro in the in the prison oh and with, with a source black uh no no no, no, no. Yeah, yeah i mean yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly what happened and also they were using rio and and i oh, think rio, the thing yeah. that and it was like kind of confusing because it's like it seems like if even someone like Kinemon had been around for as long as he did, there were little ways you could have hinted that he always knew Rio before Luffy even learned of its existence, you know? Yeah. And um I think I think that's just something that I liked about that flashback because obviously I would have preferred if it was mentioned earlier in the story, but like even if it's retroactively introduced in a flashback or like that we got in those two free panels, um, it's there, you know, it's there as opposed to not being there. So better late than never, you know. So is Rio like the the confirmed thing that can uh, hurt uh, Kaido? Or is it, or is this I think so. I think so. I, 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 th- I think also it's the, it's the same thing. Like I'm, I'm not so super into this. Like, uh, but uh, like from my understanding is uh, Rio is just an advanced version of armament. And because yeah. uh, uh, right now it just seems like only only swords are doing damage like blades. Um and which 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 has to uh, really hurt, you know, Kaido's pride. He's all about pride and being the strongest, but he's only surface level strong. Like he's weak internally. Like I don't, <laughs> I feel like that's why I, that's why I mess with Big Mom more. <laughs> At least she's trying to do something. Kaido is just a husk. He wants this great death, but he's he doesn't stand for nothing. Like who is he? Yeah. Yeah, Who I mean, is this a, man? <laughs> yeah. Um, there's this really interesting line where where Kaido says something about them imitating Odin's fighting style, 
when uh really it seems like he's he's going out of his way to imitate uh Odin in his own way where he wants that great death he wants that death that's looked back on as like an like, iconic moment and sort of like a landmark moment in, in the yeah. country and really the world's history you know yeah, yeah he wants the epic death with none of the work that goes into it it's like it's not really the way they died it's it's like what they stood for before they died <laughs> which made yeah. people admire him and like made their de- death have a greater impact on the people yeah. around them so absolutely absolutely um so yeah to cap to cap off this chapter review i think um first of all i want to ask if you had to give it some sort of i don't know some sort of like uh i don't know how do you feel about it as a whole we talked about the individual aspects of it and how we felt about those things and what we think is going to happen but what, how do you actually just feel about this chapter um, I felt like the paneling was really good this chapter. Just seeing the, the like the, uh, all the scabbers and uh, Kaido on one side, like about to class with each other. I thought that was cool. Um, I mean, it's it's a pretty good, it's a pretty solid chapter. Um, right, right. We still don't I, know like, what's I, I think, entirely going on, but it's yeah. I, I think it still goes back to that thing I said though. Like, you're only gonna like this chapter as much as you like the scabbards. And like for me, I don't know. Like, I can acknowledge the the sort of shortcomings of these scabbards and some of the stuff yeah. that Oda's done in building them up as characters. But the moment lands. I like it. Um, I like them as a group. I like most of them individually. Um, so yeah, it was it was it was alright. Yeah, like seven seven in my head. Like if I'm gonna give it a numerical grade, but really I don't like to do that. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty good on it. I think it's a good chapter. Um, what do you think is going to happen next week? What do you want to to come from the future of Wano in the next few chapters? Um, I think they all going to get bodied next week. The scabbers. Oh, 100%. Oh, 100%. Because <laughs> yeah. cause Kaido look trash right now. Kaido looks terrible right now, yeah. bro. Like, if he, like, and honestly, like, this fight began with we are going to make them look cool. We're going to give them that moment to, like, sort of get, like, Kaido back for what, what he did to their master or whatever. And then ultimately, like, they will fail. They will lose because Luffy has to be the one to defeat Kaido. And even with the Sulong transformations, they're still not strong enough to take down a Yonko. Um, honestly, like, a part of my brain says, why did this fight happen to begin with? But I know why. Like, it's, for, yeah, it's more yeah. so for their characters than any real power type thing, you know? Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like uh, in uh, Impel Down when, uh, like, Hannibal was fighting against, you know, uh, everybody that was breaking out, Crocodile, <laughs> Jim Bay, and Luffy, and <laughs> yeah, he showed yeah, like yeah, yeah. his heart and passion. It's like, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hannibal. <laughs> and, that, well, yeah. that's exactly it, man. And to be honest, like, if anything, I can appreciate it for being a character moment. Whether it's a good character moment, a great character moment, a bad character moment, it's a character moment. And yeah, um, ultimately, I'm in this for the characters and the story more than any power scaling aspect. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really. Yeah. Uh, I don't really care about you know, power scaling. I never <laughs> cared about that. Yep. Thank you for watching. Um, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of our content and chapter reviews. And yeah, take care. Peace.